in Javier Lozano, uh, co-organizer of .NET Conf, which was some sort of inspiration for our .NET Conf PL. He also co-organized many other online conferences. He's also co-founder of Iowa.NET Users Group and Iowa Code Camp, and he has his own company, Lozano Tech. Am I right? That is correct. OK. Uh, so you mentioned before we went online that you have also some second company? Yeah, we have uh, myself and um, Eric Hexter, um, who uh, used um, blogs at Los Techies. Uh, he's, uh, um, him, uh, him and I started um, a company called GeekShare, which is the, uh, the company that, that focuses on the conferences such as ASPConf, .NET Conf, and we're working on, on one called OSSConf for uh, open source and .NET. So that company handles all of the event management for all these virtual conferences. OK, so what do you mean by handle those conferences? <laughs> so uh, as you know, with you know, like .NET Conf PL, it, it takes a lot of work to get a conference going. It, it, there, it requires a lot of code, a lot of organization, and so forth. So uh, with GeekShare, what we've done is we've de we're trying to develop a, a, a way and a platform for us to create these conferences a lot faster and a lot more streamlined. Right? Uh, as you know, uh, if anybody who runs a user group or has spoken at a user group or a conference or anything like that, you know the process of getting abstracts is very difficult. You know, you submit you submit your talk. You wait to get the talk back, and all that and all that fun that goes around um, presenting. We're trying to make it as easy as possible, so that way you can share the information, and just like now, we can have a Google Hangout and literally focus on on my technical content. Okay, because like okay, .NET Conf it was free conference, right? Correct. Yep. That means nobody makes profit. Am I right? Yes. So you said you have company. So if you have company, you want to make profit, right? Yes. So uh, our end goal is to make profit on the platform, right? So the conferences are free. Ah, uh, okay. So you provide the same platform for .NET Conf as for other conferences to, for the people, right? Exactly. Yep. So if at that point, if they want to run their own conference, they can use our platform for a fee. Oh, uh, okay. Now, now I now I get it. Yep. So, um, so what was your motivation to organize online conferences? Because you organized a bunch of them. Yeah. So our motivation was uh, we literally wanted to attend a conference that uh, that was content specific to us. So Eric and I had gone to TechEd, we've gone to PDC, we've gone to different conferences, and they're good conferences, but they focus their content was all all over the spectrum, right? They had beginner stuff, they had uh, high level pieces, they have a lot of middle of the road content. Um, for us, um, having kids and having a family was hard going away for a week, right, to a conference and so forth, that we wanted to literally say, okay, for a day or two of being at home, we want to be able to get all this great content, right? And the one thing that we've noticed, you know, myself and Eric are both MVPs. We're involved through the Microsoft uh, community and so forth. A lot of our friends who are speakers also had trouble um, being presenters, right? Because they have families, they have they have kids and so forth. Yeah. So taking taking the approach of a virtual conference made all of this easier, because now we can all stay at home, <laughs> go okay. to the conference, do okay, what so we need to. Okay, so what is the first conference you organized, and the what first, it was? Yeah. The first conference we organized was called MVC Conf, and MVC Conf was targeted around the M A speed on MVC framework. It was very specific only to that. Uh, and when we first launched it, we did it using uh, actually uh, Windows uh, Live Meeting because we were able to again be able to accommodate the different rooms and uh, the, the broadcasting of literally a desktop through the web. OK. Then so after, go ahead, sir. And when it was? This was uh, three, I think, three or four years ago. It was our first MVC Conf. Oh, so, okay. we, so we had MVC Conf 1. We, has, we had MVC Conf 2, right, uh, which that was the second year. And then we ended up renaming MVC Conf um, to ASP Conf. And this was around the whole concept when Scott Hanselman wanted to, um, was pitching the idea of one ASP.NET. 
And instead of actually saying, okay, here's web forms, here's MVC, here's web API, um, we decided to, you know, we partnered with Scott and said, hey, let's, let's name this really ASPConf because that's what yeah. it is. ASPConf was big, right? It was like... It, it was huge. Path and people in Channel 9 studio. Correct. Yep. Yep. And actually, that was... We originally tried the Channel 9 piece with MVCConf2. So what we would do is we would go to... we uh, The interesting thing about it, ASP, like, for example, ASPConf uh, was over two days, we had about 47,000 attendees. Forty-seven thousand. Yeah, by by going by the unique views, we have forty-seven thousand unique views on Google. Wow, okay. that's big. That is that's a lot of that's a lot of unique views in two days. Um, we had about uh, eight thousand registered, and really, what register registration for us in a virtual in a free virtual conference is trying to gauge how big are we going to make our our infrastructure, how much do we have to scale. Okay, so for for uh, how many registration did you have for .NET Conf? .NET Conf, we had uh, I think it was close to three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand registrations. Yep, oh, we had yes. we had eighty five hundred people in those two days. Okay, so we have a little bit smaller scale, but so far we have uh, more than six hundred registrations. That's good. It means that. 20% of .NET developers are from Poland. Oh wow, that's that's great. Yeah. yeah. So um, okay, so uh, because obviously your conferences uh, sort of try to force the open source movement and yes. promote the open source movement for .NET. So if you think uh, you're doing your job good, or it may be better, and what's the state of open source before your conferences, and what's the state of now? Uh, I, I, I think what uh, that's a great question. I think what our conferences has done is has the ability to uh, to connect you, the, the the developer, with the um, the open source uh, authors, right? The, the 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 people who are out there promoting it. Right, so that's not necessarily that it has made it better, but it has hopefully lowered communication barriers that there were there before. Right, so when we had the open source panel, that was a that was a great way of getting everybody communicating and, and one you know one we should perform. The downside of it is that when you have that many people talking, <laughs> it can be very hard to to yeah. figure out okay who's going to speak next. Um, specifically, since no one's getting visual cues from each other because they're all in different parts of the world, it, it also makes scheduling, as you know, a lot more, a lot harder. Because we had people in the U.S., we had people in the U.K., we had people in Europe, we had people in uh, Singapore. So trying to find a time where everything matches, it becomes very hard. Yeah, I know that because we have speakers. Uh, I mean, I, I am in I am in the United States. I am in Canada. Yeah. Like a lot, of, uh, most of people are in Poland, so it's yes. like seven hours different. And we have one speaker from uh, Redmond, which is like nine nine hours yeah. different. Yep. Yeah. That's that's very really hard, but we fit like uh, good enough. Like we started three yep. p.m. in Poland, and we end at like nine p.m. So it's not not that bad. And yeah, I do wake up tomorrow like at seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> still on yeah. that. And, and it's funny because actually the one thing we, we learned very quickly when as we did every conference was we had to standardize on a uh, on a time zone. So um, you you say you're in Kansas and I see your Kansas State University shirt. Oh okay. um, yeah, we <laughs> there you go, go Wildcats. I, I actually I went to uh, I'm in Iowa, so I'm just literally north of you, and I went uh, I went to Iowa State University, and and Eric lives in Austin, Texas, so we're all central. Right, central time zone. So for the first couple conferences, all of our time zones were central. So you know, minus six, minus five, depending on daylight savings time. Um, for some conferences, we shifted to Redmond time or you know Pacific, you know negative yeah. eight, because there was that's where the Microsoft Teams were. That so it's a lot easier to say, okay, we're going to based off Redmond time. But again, that's so further back into the time zones that people in Europe and in Asia and so forth. It just makes it a really either late late night or very very early morning, depending how they're doing it. That's true. That, that, that's a problem, but no, I think we can we, we handled it not that bad. That's great. Yeah. 
Yeah, so because um, you said your first conference was MVC Conf, so yes. uh, you are ASP.NET MVC developer now? Yes, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm an ASP.NET insider and I'm ASP.NET uh, MVP. So everything that I do around uh, development is uh, it's around the ASP.NET stack. So you think because of your conferences and .NET movement, now the ASP.NET MVC is like the the best like way to get started with web development. Like when I was starting web mm -hmm. development ten years ago, like it was obvious when you have like database or something, use PHP and MySQL. Yep. Somebody used Java, but it was you know some business enterprise corporation. Mm -hmm. But today, my impression is that ASP.NET MVC is pretty like sort of maybe lightweight. We have host a lot of hostings like Heroku, yep. App Harbor, all of that. So, uh, do you think now ASP.NET MVC is like a leader in web frameworks? Uh, I wouldn't say it's the leader, right? I would say it's the uh, it's the one that it's easy that people can easier relate to. The reason why I say that is because of now you know you have Rails, you have Node, you have other things out there that sort of follow the, well, the MVC pattern to an extent. You know, Node doesn't out of the box, but there's you know, uh, other, um, other frameworks that Node provides that are similar enough that you learn one pattern and you can easily apply it. Um, so I would say it's the easiest one for other people who have different skill sets to join and understand. Web forms are still very solid. I mean, if you're doing SharePoint development, if you're doing legacy stuff, it's still there and it, you can create a lot of uh, quick applications with web forms, and, and, the, and, it, and then the same thing, it, it scales the same way as MVC does because it's all ASP.NET. Um, and then you have web pages, right? Web pages, are, it's a lot lighter. Right? It's more of the, um, I mean, I'm an entry. It's, I would say it's better than ASP. Right, remember classic ASP? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I didn't uh, do some significant stuff uh, with classic ASP. I just oh, sure. one time look on it and I said, oh, I like Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's funny because actually uh, I started web development with ASP. I used ASP2, and then I did some more ASP3, and then I wanted to do uh, more object-oriented programming with, with web development, and I couldn't do that with, um, with ASP, right? Well, unless I was writing a lot of stuff in Visual, in Visual C++ with COM objects and all that stuff. So I ended up moving from that to Java and doing um, servlets. So I did a lot of servlets for a while because I wanted the OO. Um, and then when ASP.NET came out with web forms, uh, I, I took some of the knowledge that I had with Java already, Java and C and C++, and that's how I learned C Sharp and got going with that. This was around, you know, in two, uh, this was around in the year 2000, right, when first ASP.NET came out. So the thing about it is that everything I've learned, even from the ASP on, uh, ASP 2.0 days up to now, it's all been additive, right? It's not like one thing does, and one one tool may do it better. By better is it requires less lines of code, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Uh, than the other one, but at the same time, they all have the same fundamental. Um, structure and uh, needs that you're trying to try to accomplish. Yeah, so uh, so be before ASP, did you do some other development? Or when you graduate from a university, you start working as an ASP? Developer? Yeah, I, I used to do a lot of uh, Visual Basic development. So actually, I started writing Visual Basic uh, 4, right? So Windows 3.1, Windows 95. Okay. Uh, and then I, so all, you know, growing up, I was doing a lot of that Visual Basic 4, Visual Basic 5, Visual Basic 6. And that's when, you know, the internet was become, you know, uh, was starting to become uh, a lot more prominent. And I decided, like, hey, you know what? Desktop is our cool. I know what I can do. I'm, I'm proficient in it. Let me try this web thing. And uh, originally, my first code uh, samples that I, uh, and web pages that I did were writing, was writing ActiveX objects that ran on IE. Oh. IE, IE4, IE3. That's hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago, but you know, you know. Uh, but at the same time, it's like I said, it's, it's all those skill sets and all those things that I've done. It, it just has gone. It's, it's. I've learned from it. Oh yeah, sure. That's yep. true. I agree with that. Yep. Um, so, um, do you have some advice, or maybe what you are doing to be a better developer every day, like attending conferences or reading books? Yeah. And maybe going some t online tutorials, uh, yep. having a look, or what's your yep. advice for developers? My, my advice for developers is never stop learning, right? Learn whichever way you can. Uh, you know, 
take take the free content like such as you know .dot conf pl some of the stuff that you guys are going to be doing. Um, take the time to go whether you watch it live or you watch it later. You no, know, just look through look through the the sessions. It's like hey, I want to learn about this, and and start really prioritizing. Not necessarily try to say I'm going to be the master of everything. I want to be the best .dot program out there. Don't that those days from my perspective are over over from the that you do that you're going to learn a lot about stuff uh, about a different things but you're not going to focus on one so start saying hey I want to write the best applications on ASP.NET focusing on Azure or Signal R or you know JavaScript front end or whatever those things are focus on that and then really understand that piece and then step back and then try to marry different technologies or different approaches to learning uh, when I first started, there was none of that. So you just pretty much have to do it. <laughs> you have to learn it all. Oh, now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on. Yeah. Now is you have the flexibility to do it, and there's way more content than there was uh, back when I was first started. Yeah. So, but how how you are learning? You're just googling and pick up the first link. Yeah. Or, or... I, I go to I go to Google, and typically, if if I, if a good um, Stack Overflow question, I mean, the, the ones that usually come up the, at the top, right, I usually read some of that. I read some, I read articles. Uh, I mostly like watching video, like uh, conferences, so uh, I will go back to um, some of the .NET Comp stuff we have, some of the ASP Comp, some of the Tech Ed, some of the um, PDC content, do some of that. I actually, um, funny enough, I have three different um, just uh, video video subscriptions, so you know there's plural site. So okay. some of the stuff I, I go through some of the plural site content, not necessarily to learn how to do something, it's just to get a different perspective on it. Okay, right? I, I'm not sure uh, whether I understand you. You said sure. that it's good to focus on one thing and good one thing good, but it's also good to try different things to have a different perspective. So I, I don't really understand whether. Sure. It's good to you know like go to Azure into like two years and yep. focus on that, <laughs> or, or I sh I should do this Azure during these two years, but like also doing some other stuff. Uh, yep. So so okay, that's a great question. So the way I the way I approach that, and this is I've done this myself, is that I would say, hey, for the next year or for the next X amount of time, whatever you're comfortable with, focus on this one thing. Focus on on Azure, for example. Learn what Azure can do and what it can't do, right? Okay. And and then one of the things you'll notice is that on the edges, on the fringes, you'll notice that Azure will then dot 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 to something else, okay. right? To uh, for example, learn. Uh, let's look at Service Bus. So Azure has a Service Bus. Okay, learn learn what it does, kind of the concept around it, and then you realize that oh wait a minute, a Service Bus can you know. Can you, you can use it for like CQRS or service-oriented architecture and so forth. Instead of going down that path right away, because you know as developers we go, oh look, new new stuff. Let's go <laughs> let's go look at it. Make a note of it, and and so that by the time you're done and you figure out, okay, well now I've understand as much as I can out of Azure. What are out of working with it? What are the next the next things that I should be learning with using this as my as my launch pad, right? So what I mentioned about the whole Pluralsight stuff is that if I'm learning, okay, here's how I'm going to do Angular JS, right? So I will go look at something in Pluralsight with regards to Angular JS. So I will get that perspective. Then I will go to Treehouse, right, which is another um, uh, another video learning site, and I will go get that perspective. I will go to TechPub and get that perspective as well. So I'm getting the same content, the same subject, but just from different people. Right? It's not any different from you talking with other developers who are doing MVC or ASP.NET development from whether it be at in the university or in Poland or you know or wherever that you're saying it's like, hey, I just want to know how what this means to you and how you're doing it. Okay, thank you very much. That was really helpful. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, you have a blog, right? But you stopped blogging like two years ago. Or? Yeah, I, I haven't blogged uh, as, as like you said two years ago. Not because I don't like to blog; it's just I haven't had much time to blog. Oh, yeah. uh, the, the one thing I found out is that uh, I, you know back when I was blogging all this stuff, I was presenting a lot more, 
um, speaking with, you know, doing whether it be a local event, a national event, or whatever. Uh, and then I realized that the moment I switched to organized events, all my free time went into that. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I see. Okay, so don't don't blog. Just go organize events. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And it, and it, yeah. And it doesn't mean that I don't want to blog. I mean, I, I I love to blog. It's just I don't have time to blog, and or I don't make time to blog. Let's go that way. <laughs> Let's go with that one. Okay. So uh, when there will be no uh, next .NET Conf? That is a good question. Actually, uh, my uh, myself, Eric, and. Um, so um, Scott Hanselman and John Galloway, uh, we're going to be uh, meeting next uh, month at the MVP Summit. We've been talking about it, and uh, we want to kind of slot for the next .NET Conf, the next ASP Conf. And uh, I know I want to. I know we've had the idea in the back burner for several years with OSS Conf, which will be focused on OSS and open source software in the .NET space. So. Okay. We want to tackle. We want to tackle those three conferences all next year. All three conferences next year. Yes, that's that's the goal. Now, whether we can with our free time, that's that's a little bit. You know, as you know, it's it's a little bit harder said than done. Yep. So I wish you good luck with that, and I'm waiting for it. Yeah. And so, very last question: Have you sure. ever been to Poland? No, I have not been to Poland. I haven't been to Europe at all. It's it's been on my to. I, I want to every time I, I want to submit to a talk in you know in, in Europe, I always find out about it after the speakers have been selected. Wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I will submit a submit proposal for it because we have cool uh, Dev Day Conf in Poland. Oh yeah. Have you heard about it? No, I haven't. Well, to tell oh, me about it. That's last year. Uh, there was Scott Hanselman there, and this oh really? Free. This is free. Uh, one company is sponsored, and we have very cool speakers like uh, Rob Ashton. Oh uh, yeah. As I mentioned, Scott Hanselman is very cool. So I will send you uh, as a proposition to this. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would love to. I would love to go go in, uh, and speak over there. Okay. So thank you very much for your yeah. time, and thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much. <laughs>